Hey guys, meet Ronald Chris Tomer here on this Wednesday. We did pick up some snow uh, last night and early this morning. We'll start up here at Alta, and they're reporting three inches of snow in the last 24 hours. This storm now moving through parts of Colorado and New Mexico and eventually exiting today. Then we have to start to look down the road, and when the big enchilada comes in between Friday and Saturday across uh, the Wasatch, and wait till I show you what the jet stream is going to look like with this. It's going to plow in, and uh, it's pretty exciting. All right, so that's out. Let me take you to Monarch Ski Area in Colorado. Reporting one or two inches of new snow. You can see it is uh, still shrouded there. I love Monarch, one of my uh, favorite places there in uh, the Central Mountains off Highway 50 there in Colorado. Um, I got about 10 inches in my extended forecast through the 8th for the uh, the monarch area let's go up to aspen snow mass uh, they're reporting a couple of inches of new snow once this camera comes online you can see that and there is some very light snow coming down at aspen i've got a lot of snow in my extended forecast once this northwest flow settles in friday saturday sunday we're in really good shape um tell you ride now i'm not sure if they've cleared when the last time was they cleared the snow stake but that's a foot of snow right there I know it says that they clear it every 24 hours. I'm just not sure if that's the case. But anyway, that's that's a lot of snow. Uh, looking really good in Telluride. And one more stop, shrouded up here at Arapaho Basin, reporting a couple of inches of new snow. And you could still pick up some additional accumulations uh, today. Here's radar out of Colorado. So there are the remnants. Um, there's our cold front. This was the same front that delivered that snow up in the parts of the Wasatch. But notice the flow. We're getting this northeast wind, and that's driving the snow production across Denver, I-25, the foothills, and then up to the Continental Divide. Uh, yeah, we got snow here in Denver anywhere from 2 to 5 inches uh, of accumulation. This was our first real snow. And you've got snow all the way down I-25, Levita Pass, down towards Alamosa, the San Grady Cristos, and you can see the snow developing over the top of northern New Mexico. So that uh, that cold front will eventually exit today, tonight. Here's the look at the Pacific Northwest, the western view. There's the next storm system moving in, and that one will take a very similar track on this northwest flow pattern. Lot to look forward to. Let me show you my, uh, actually, let me show you the water vapor satellite imagery. So the big view top down. On this, the whites and the blues are going to be your moisture in the mid-levels of the atmosphere. So there's our front right there. That will continue to slide away today. And then look at this big sort of like comma-shaped cloud. That is like a conveyor belt moving into the Pacific Northwest with very heavy precipitation in the forecast for a lot of the Pacific Northwest. And then the whole thing is going to rotate down like I said, on this northwest flow into the interior Rockies Friday, Saturday, and also Sunday. Here are my bullet points. Um, so overall, it's all about this northwest flow with some pretty significant bullseyes in parts of Montana, Idaho, Wyoming, Colorado, and even the Pacific Northwest as well. And I'll show you that. So cold front exiting Colorado, New Mexico today. Next one's 12-4, 12-5. And then another one, 12, 5, 12, 6, 12, 7. And that's, that's probably the big enchilada right there. The 12, 5, 12, 6 one, probably trickling into 12, 7. And then the flow is going to shift up and away from the inner mountain and then towards the Pacific Northwest. And some high pressure ridging will fill that void across the inner mountain. Here are your best odds of accumulating snow. So, for example, light to moderate snow remaining residual snow across Colorado today. Light on 12.5, and then the big stuff comes in 12.6, 12.7 with potentially heavy snow accumulations. I don't have anything for Tahoe. Uh, in Utah, there it is, 12.5, 12.6, heavy, and then residual light snow into 12.7. Wyoming, afternoon, evening, 12.4, into 12.6, heavy light to moderate 12.7 and 12.8. And then the flow, again, as it shifts up towards the Pacific Northwest, late in the period, 12.5 through 12.8 could be heavy up into parts of uh, the Pacific Northwest and interior BC. All right, 
here's the forecast radar. So we'll start this up at lunchtime today, Wednesday, December 3rd. There is uh, the storm system, and again, sliding through Colorado, New Mexico, and away with drier air coming in on the back side of it. Um, let me push this ahead. So there's your dinner hour. All right, here's 5 a.m. on Thursday, December 4th, and look at the northwest flow setting up. Just re-engaging, blowing snow down through parts of uh, central to northern Idaho, Montana, and eventually right there into the, uh, the heart of the Tetons. All right, there's the lunch hour, nailing the Tetons. Look at that. By the time we get to the dinner hour, I mean, we've got heavy snow. Tetons, Montana, central I northern Idaho, moving into the Wasatch and the High Uintas, and eventually it's going to be dropping into Colorado. Um, here we are, 5 a.m. on Friday, December 5th. You've got that leading edge with that snow. And then look at the reinforcing shot of precip and front behind that will come in right on its heels. All right, here we go. There's the lunch hour, uh, dinner hour, and there's 5 a.m. on Saturday. So a continuation of this northwest flow with cold temperatures bumping up against all of these mountain ranges, squeezing out the snowfall, good aura graphics, good efficiency. And, I mean, you can just see it. Mountain ranges getting nailed here with all of that northwest flow. Love it. Um, let's talk about the pressure anomalies. Actually, you know, let's do a time height for Arapaho Basin in Colorado, right up on top of the Continental Divide. So this is a three-day forecast with a slice right through the atmosphere. We'll start this the current day, and then you move in this direction into the future. So what I'm looking for is the green. Where you see the green here, that's today. That's the continuation of the snow with this storm system. Little bit of a dry pocket. Then here comes the next push. That's the afternoon evening of 12.4 into 12.5, continuing into 12.6. And then that would continue into 12.7, and then maybe into the morning of 12.8. So um, probably probably just through the 7th. But you get the idea that this is, once it reestablishes itself, late on the 4th, it continues into the 5th, into the 6th, and into the 7th. So a nice lifting wind over the top of the continental divide. All right, pressure anomalies. This is 12.6, and I've been showing this the last couple of days. You see these ripples? That's the northwest flow, and just a classic signature, cold temps, good flow, or a graphics, we're going to be squeezing out a lot of snow. Um, here's 1229, so this is, no, 129, excuse me, this is 129, high pressure ridging moving in, the active flow is on the north side of this. And so this, this high would be sliding into the inner mountain, pushing the flow back up here into the Pacific Northwest, BC, and Northern Tier. And a lot of lower than normal pressures out here with a big dip in the jet across the Midwest, the Great Lakes, and the Northeast. Cold out there. All right, final. This is 12-12. And really significant pressure drops. I mean, this is going to be an Arctic air mass here by 12-12 across a lot of the... Uh, the Midwest. And then you've got a significant building ridge here with higher than normal pressures across the West. What happens after this? It looks like eventually everything just keeps rotating and then we'll have another drop in pressures move in across the West. But it, we'll have to get through this. Um, here's the jet. This is what I wanted to show you. So this is the steering wind up at about 30,000 feet. This is on Saturday. This is in the heart of that northwest flow when we're really ringing out big totals and look at the jet perfect right so all of the disturbances all of the energy riding that northwest flow through Idaho through parts of Montana Wyoming northern Utah Colorado all getting nailed the Pacific Northwest love it great flow um, here's total precip across uh, the west Five-day total precip as if everything fell as rain. Uh, the key break point, again, for me is about an inch. That's where you see the yellows on this. That's at least a foot of snow. Central and northern Idaho, parts of Montana, Tetons, Yellowstone, uh, the Wasatch, the High Uintas, 
parts of Colorado. Look at this. Really big time snow. Uh, big time precip, but translating into big snow up there in the Pacific Northwest. I mean, we've got the reds coming out up there. Changing the vantage point, five day total precip to the southwest. Not a lot unless you're in Utah and Colorado. Let's do a simple 10 to 1 snow forecast here based on that. Deep purple is at least six inches. The bright pink is at least a foot. And if you see white, that's a couple of feet. So let's see what we've got here. Look at that. Some white coming out in the Pacific Northwest, interior BC. You've got potentially one, at least one to two feet up here in central and northern Idaho, northwest Montana, um, right there over the Tetons, uh, northern Utah and the Wasatch. I mean, those are all of the big ranges getting hit hard. Changing the perspective to the southwest, again, everything is sort of relegated. It's all up here, um, confined to Utah, Colorado, the big stuff. Um, all right, here's my official forecast. Grand totals by the close of business on 12-8, one to two feet for the Wasatch. And, and this is, you know, when I looked at the data this morning and I looked at the Wasatch, it was a pretty easy call to bump it up to one to two feet. And it, there's even a possibility, I'm thinking in the back of my mind, that the numbers could even go higher than this. With the kind of ratios and the cold air and this northwest flow, I mean, things are really going to get maximized. So I well, guess what I'm saying is I like one to two feet, but it could be more. There could be places that go higher, like Little Cottonwood. You might push 30 inches. Uh, we'll zoom into Colorado here in a second. I've still got t uh, two feet up there in the Tetons, Grand Targhee, Jackson Hole. Uh, about a foot, 10 to 12 up here, maybe more parts of Montana. I really like Brundage, uh, the central and northern mountains zones of uh, Idaho for potentially 10 to 20 inches. In fact, 15 to 20, um, 8 to 12 up here, interior BC. Pretty good stretch up here with... Uh, potentially one to two feet for Bachelor, Hood, Crystal, Baker, Stevens, up to Whistler. All right, let me zoom into Colorado. So in Colorado, uh, it's kind of a kind of a 10 to 20 incher across a lot of the central and northern mountain zones. So at least a foot up here on the Continental Divide, Loveland, A Basin, Keystone, Winter Park, Cameron Pass. Uh, more in Steamboat. I've got 20 up here with that preferred sort of northwest flow pattern. Uh, I mean, but you can see how it, what it's doing here. It's really squeezing out snow over a foot through Crested Butte, Pitkin County, Aspen, Snowmass, um, that whole zone, Vail, Copper, looking good, and 6 to 10 down here through southern uh, Colorado and northern New Mexico. Looking at the, uh, the Wasatch here, so there's your two feet up in Little Cottonwood or more. Big Cottonwood's at about 20. And that I-80 stretch towards Park City, Deer Valley, uh, looking at 14, 15 inches. Um, up the road up here in Snow Basin, um, certainly 18 to 20 uh, is what I'm thinking at this point up in that zone. So this is a really good looking forecast. I mean, this will easily be the biggest snow that we've seen so far this season and a real classic um, a real classic uh, jackpot for a lot of the Wasatch type setup. All right, looking at the northeast, uh, a little bit of snow, a touch with a little coastal low there, a little bit of lake effect coming off, Michigan, Erie, and Ontario, but a lot of this area is kind of caught in between with low amounts. So here's my forecast, grand totals by the end of 12.8, one to three inches. We'll do it for all of the Northeast. All right, guys, we're going to end on the big Western view here, and this is really exciting stuff with this powerful Northwest flow coming in. And again, the big enchilada, 12.5, 12.6, potentially 12.7. Thanks for tuning in here. Always appreciate it. Take care and have a great day.